Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys definitely make. I mean, and I and I would assume that the sounds say when new edition, uh, so Bell with the Vo, and right. and and all that, based on what you guys were doing, they start to change their, their their sounds and everything. Yeah, they had to come to to you know when we doing new jack, and then you know when we are doing hip hop and R and B soul. Yeah, and then you know grown and sexy. And we did that all the way. We kept having hit records. It wasn't that we weren't having hits. Like I said, we had So For Real. We had um, Father MC was still there. He was still doing gold platinum albums. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, Lost yeah, Boys. Yeah, Monifa. Monifa. That, that's when Heavy took over. Okay. When he, when my he, girl, she was dope. She was dope. Like, yeah, Heavy, Crystal Heavy, we, we left Heavy. And we started uh, Harrell Entertainment, uh, New America. We left Uptown, and no, excuse me, we left Uptown. We went to Motown, which was a wrong move for us. Yeah, now so I wanted to get to that because I, I I remember because I used to read the Billboard magazines, and I remember seeing from Uptown to Motown, and I saw this little right. cigar and a chair and everything in the promotion. Right, and but like, Andre <laughs> lost his mind at that point. Right, there. I know? was like. And, and I was like, why? No, I mean, because, you know, it was almost like going from a, taking your Ferrari and going into an old tanker, because Motown had, to, it was established, but it wasn't, it might have been more money and stuff, but it just felt right. like you had to change too much stuff. And I don't know how much was he influenced by, wow, look what Puffy's doing so quickly. Maybe I need to move up. But what was the decision? How did that all come about? That played guys... a part of, that played a part of it. I mean... The Motown deal came. We were successful, but we were locked in the MCA. They they had a major, probably the majority share of Uptown, you know, a lot of it. And uh, basically, we had ran our course at Uptown. And Andre made the wrong decision of going to Motown because he, he thought about the legacy that was there. And he thought that he could bring some new energy there. But, you know, this is all politics. When you get over there, you got to work the politics out first before you could even have a clean slate to operate. We're not, we, w we didn't have the autonomy to move around like we did at Uptown. But we had more money to move around. One, we didn't have the acts to support that move. We had to start still working Stevie Wonder. There's no disrespect to him. Yeah. Dying of Ross and all that kind of stuff. Temptation and that wasn't, and our, yeah. that wasn't even our genre of music. That We didn't even, we listened to that music like we listened to Marvin Gaye. You know, we, you know it was incredible. It's the best music on the planet, but it ain't our music. And it's just like with these kids today. You know, a lot of this uh, mumble rap and whatever other kind of track, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't be able to work that properly. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you got to be there. You got to be a part of it. You got to you gotta live it. And that's why we were so successful because we were a part of it and we were living it. We lived mm -hmm. the lyrics. We lived the creative process. It was like a, a, a everything. I'll tell you this. Even the worst days at Uptown was a party. Wow. The worst days was the best days. After Gene Griffin slapped the shit out of Andre, we went out, <laughs> we, went out we went out and partied like it was 1999. Okay. You know, now, I, I saw Andre in one of his last interviews with Kenny Burns, um, mm -hmm. and he, he mentioned how he was in his, in his an apartment with his girl, and the bell, Gene comes to the house at like six in the morning or five in the morning and says, yeah. I want to publish it, and Teddy's outside in the car. 
and you know he just you know signs it over to. But you know we heard this kind That's, of thing. that ain't true. That ain't that ain't true. I mean, he signed a portion of it over, and okay. he, when he came to his house, Andre, like I said, when you're dealing with smart guys. You got to remember, they're tougher than any gangster that has ever lived. A smart guy, somebody that's super intelligent, yeah. will outsmart you and belittle you at the same time. Because that smack that he gave Andre that day in that office was the worst thing. He might as well resided to doing construction after that. Okay? And then when they came to his house with Teddy in the car, yeah. Andre yeah, I want the publishing from this, this, this. Got it. What else you need? Uh, the publishing from this, this, and this. Got it. What else you need? The publishing from that, that, and that. Got it. As soon as I get in the office, first thing in the morning, sign everything over to you. Got in the office, called the lawyers. Fuck them. That's what. <laughs> Fuck him. Throw me out a window next time, nigga. <laughs> I'm not giving up shit until it's the right way to give it up. And if you look at it, they say that Teddy and them went off and started their own record label. Look at every album that they put out at Universal. It says Uptown Imprint, small Uptown Imprint. You know what that means? Uptown is getting paid. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I learned that dealing in the record business, these guys don't necessarily, they don't have to be tough. You just have to be smart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but how much did the Shook Knight thing affect, influence the move to Uptown? That whole sense where you felt, well, Puffy is gone, Mary and Jody see, see, <clears throat> were looking like they were going over to Shook. Did, how much did I feel like, we're losing a family. Let's just take the offer and go. What well, well, you know, we just kept bringing in new artists, you know. But you know, we were definitely, uh, we've definitely been. Uh, we were shook. It was disturbing. It was. Um, it was terrible. It was. Uh, it was terrible. And and Shook was a uh, imposing, threatening guy. But you didn't know, like. None of that shit bothered us. None of we what none of that mattered. Cause at the end of the day, when you look at it, what actually happened to anybody? Nothing. He's the one in jail. At the end of the day, I mean, Andre passed away, yeah. but when all of it was over, you weren't even on anybody's mind. And what he did to Jodeci is basically disrupt their creative flow and destroy them. Yeah, because they they um they didn't recover with, after 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 the the, the style and, went off. Yeah. And Mary left with, with Puff. You know what I mean? Mary went off and started making her own records with Puff and without Puff. Yeah. When the decision came for when up the Motown opportunity came how, did you guys have a discussion and say, yep, let's go? Or did you think it weighed over? How, what was it for both of you? Andre, Andre wanted to go because he thought that, you know, MCA had a noose around his neck. But Universal is MCA. So it was a bad move to go to Motown. And Mark Siegel, of course, was like, yeah, we should go. You know what I mean? Because he don't really care about the... <laughs> <laughs> the label he cares about. <laughs> and, you know, Andre's looking at it like, you know, I don't want to be here no more. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. But he wasn't thinking clearly. And people had told him. Everybody told him. A lot of people had told him. But he wasn't listening because they had to check in his face. And it was a way he thought that he could start anew, fresh. But he went like you said, to an old car. He went from a fresh, brand new Ferrari yeah. to an old tanker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was devastated. We went, we went, yeah, we went. I mean, yeah. it was, it was whack. It was whack from the beginning. Like it's just the whole communication because they finally had total control of them, and that's what they wanted to do. 
and they want him to start working on the temptations and this, that, and that. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, and you know, you're right. I mean, and, and that's the one thing about, yeah, they did have the legacy artist, but he, he was used to bringing in the new from the streets. Right. And, that's what and because of the new and from the streets, when I went to radio, I didn't have to say nothing. They just had to see that uptown yeah. imprint yeah. and they would put it on and it's gone. Yeah. And I think, you see, you guys started something that everyone else did. So when you look at Cash Money, No Limits, and um, Bad Boy, um, The Face, they looked at the imprint and it's like, oh, this is a new artist from The Face or Cash Money or Murder, Inc. Before that, you know, no one really thought, oh, there's a new MCA act. Maybe some of the radio stations, but the public didn't know. But when, you know, Uptown had the cats and had, like the artists were all under that banner. And I think as fans, we kind of associated Uptown with a style of music and we bought into that. And I think everyone else followed that blueprint. But I think going to Motown, it, it had its legacy stuff back in the 60s and, and maybe 70s. But by the, by the 90s, I mean, they didn't really, I don't know who, I mean, they had Today and they had Basic Black with Gene Griffin, but they right. really didn't. And, and that was Gerald Busby had went to Motown and it hurt his legacy. You know what I mean? I mean, he had hit records, excuse me, Johnny Gill, <laughs> yeah. Basic Black, and, and Today, but they weren't no breakthrough acts. They weren't no, you know, I mean, and I love Big Bub and, you know, but they 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 weren't about that music. That's why they couldn't. And Gene Griffin wasn't about that music. He didn't know no. Teddy was the hit. Teddy was the hit. And by that time, Teddy was... I'm not saying he's fading because he did Michael Jackson's album. Mm -hmm. And so he was incredible. But he wasn't making those street records. He wasn't making those Devontae Swing records. Yeah. A Jodeci. He wasn't making those Puff Daddy. He wasn't, he wasn't the man no more like he was during the New Jack Swing era. Yeah. I mean, but, he wasn't the man until he made those Michael Jackson records. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That takes it to yeah. another level. But then... Right. So when someone asked the question, after Gerald Busby moved, it seemed like MCA didn't support Uptown. How come? They did. I mean, we they were, because we were rolling over them. We were, everything was going. And they didn't want us to go to pop radio. They didn't want us to do pop, you know, anything that had to do with pop that would take our records to the next level. They tried to hold us back. And it was a constant fight. With them okay. trying to pull us back, telling us that we should just stay in this black music category. First of all, I wasn't listening to anybody. I wasn't listening to Andre or nobody else. When I went to go radio or anywhere else, I went wherever I wanted to. You know what I mean? And 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 it would cause a major problem. But, I would, but I would they're be making in, money though. Aren't they making money? But if but they you know, you got to understand the bureaucratic bullshit that goes on. People usually at a record company are trying to protect their job because they're out of touch. They know they're out of touch. And here comes this new company, fresh with fire. And they can't, if they let you out of the cage, you know, you can't control. It's like Puffy. You can't control them. Okay. You can't control them. Like, and now... The spotlight is on you. The spotlight is on you. To like, what are you really doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. These guys, we're holding these guys back, and they're still going quadruple platinum. But now, when, yeah, go ahead. we got Jody Watley, and she's doing a million. We got whoever we got, they're doing a million. 500,000. These guys come out with a new group even after Puffy leaves and they're like Michael Jackson, so for real. And they do two million albums. Heavy D's group do two million albums right out of the rip. Mm. Because we got relationships on the street that they don't have with producers. That's them. Music is on the streets. It yeah. develops. You get your swag. You get your fucking creative flow from the streets. From the people that you're interacting with, for like the dude that is coming from the basketball court and he got a certain kind of sneakers on, or the guy that is 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 a drug dealer that got a bow tie and a blazer on, but he's hiding the fact that he's a drug dealer, or you know the uh, uh, college professor that works at CUNY 
uh, whatever, that likes to go to the nightclubs and get with the chicks and buy champagne, you know? Uh, and But he's, he's, you're in his class on Monday morning, but all these things intertwined together. The nightclub owners, you know, the is just everything. It's on the streets. Like you gotta be outside for that. You can't be up in Beverly Hills or in Universal in Hollywood somewhere and be up on a hill uh, making those kind of records. No, you're gonna make damn near classic, traditional records that are good, but they don't have no feeling and there's yeah. no pulse and there's no drive to, to bring it all together as a, a, a company, as a representation, as a crew, you know, as, as, as you know, the, everybody in your crew, you got a hundred people working for you. They all walk, talk, look alike damn near and they're pushing your vision constantly. Yeah. The artists look like you, they talk like you, the, mm. the staff looks like you, they talk like you, and the staff is more uh, uh, stars than the, more of a star, more stars than the artists are. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, they had, yeah, I mean, that just became, the executives became big stars, and I think Shug and I presented that when he said, the executive is dancing on your records and stuff. But, um, but the, the question that, that I had, because I've got a lot of questions, but I wanted to find out about, um, you, you've, um, when Gerald Busby goes to Uptown, uh, Motown, then, is it after he left is when the opportunity came for Andre? Right. Okay. And you decided, yep, I'm coming with you, or you didn't think, well, let me stay and take over Mot um, Uptown? Well, I, I wasn't offered it. Uh, Heavy was offered. Puffy had left. Heavy was offered Uptown. And Heavy wanted me to come with him to Uptown, but my loyalty to Andre, I was never going to not be with Andre. Okay. Hello. I was never not going to, I'm wherever he was going, I was going, you know, and that's how it goes, you know. Um, even till today, before he passed away, you know, I talked to him the, the day before he passed away. And whenever I, because I, I work in California, I live in New York, but I work yeah. in California. So, you know, I work with the Hughes brothers. Okay. And, yeah. and I work. I work with uh, Alan Hughes in particular, and uh, so I'm out there and we're shooting a film. Which I'm right now. I'm doing the uh, Tupac in a Feeny doc, bio doc right now. Wow. And we are just coming off of the Defiant Ones, the story of Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. Won a Grammy for that. Oh, okay. So, so that you're doing a, you're doing movie and filming, right? And we're moving into getting ready to do Arnold Schwarzenegger's documentary right now, as I speak. Wow. So I got all that going on, but I'm talking with Andre about the up and coming BET uh, six part series he wants to do on BET about Uptown, yeah. and we're. We're in uh, his house with the writers, you know, and we wrote out the whole history of Uptown, him and I. And we got, yeah. you know, information from other people, but it's like, it was me and him since we were nine years old. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, there can't even be a story written about Andre without me being in it. Yeah. You could try. You could try. You yeah. I mean? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. if, and like I said, I'm not mad at, at, at anybody doing the story. You, Everybody, because uh, Henry Louis Gates Jr. said, don't get mad at anybody for doing the story or writing the story about whatever they want to write about, even if it's about you. If you yeah. want to tell the truth or you have something to say, write your own story. Yeah. Do your own. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So are you involved with Uptown Forever that's on BT? Uh, right now, we still, uh, I was involved and we still trying to figure out if there's a way for me to fit in the way I feel I need to be fitted in. If not, then they can go ahead and do it and 
all praises because I'm doing something about the history of Uptown music. Mm. And that doesn't just entail Uptown. Yeah. It entails how this whole thing got to where we at today, from where yeah. we came from to where we are today. Because me and yeah. Andre are at the forefront of pushing that whole thing together. Yeah. Mm.